Grandpa stole his first buggy in 1892. Uh, I met your grandma pig slopping in 46. Oh, every Christmas we'd visit my Uncle Fred in prison. And welcome to another spine-tingling edition of Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth, on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. This segment of our show is brought to you by MyHeritage.com. Our guest today, we're going to talk to a guy named Zachariah Fike. He has put together an organization called Purple Hearts Reunited. And this guy has become so passionate about discovering displaced Purple Hearts and reuniting them either with the veterans themselves if they're still living or descendants and he's got stories to tell that'll just touch your heart and you're going to love hearing that coming up in about eight minutes or so later in the show we're going to talk to oscar hammerstein the third he goes by andy he's going to be doing a special presentation at roots tech the world's largest family history conference in salt lake city utah coming up in just a couple of weeks he's going to be doing this with the mormon tabernacle choir performing Rogers and Hammerstein music, and you're going to hear all about his family history. Amazing stuff coming up. Hey, just a reminder, by the way, if you have not yet signed up for our free weekly Genie newsletter, you can do so at ExtremeGenes.com. And when you do, you'll get the top 10 tips for beginning genealogists from David Allen Lambert, the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. That's a lot to fit on a business card, David. How are things in Boston? Things in Beantown are doing great fish. Are you looking forward to Roots Tech? Oh, absolutely. We're just a a couple of weeks away now, February 8th through 11th in Salt Lake City, Utah. And of course, we want to invite all the genies to come by the Extreme Genes booth. We're going to do a meet and greet with uh, you, David, and of course, myself and Tom Perry, our preservation authority. We're going to do two one-hour meet and greets, one on Thursday from 2.30 to 3.30, and one on Saturday from 10.15 to 11.15, and that'll be at the Extreme Genes booth, 13. 1925 at the Salt Palace Convention Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, you know, I think that we need to toss out a contest. For me to our listeners, come by the booth one of those two days, and if you're the 176th visitor to do a selfie with the three of us at the booth, I'll give you a free one-hour consultation with me on genealogy on phone, or perhaps if you're near Boston, come on in and I can work with you there. Wow. That is quite an offer. Of course, 176, because today's show is our 176th. I thought it was a fitting way to do it. Well, let's start off the family histoire news with some really touching news from Pearl Harbor. Of course, last month, we celebrated the 75th anniversary of the attack. The USS Oklahoma was one of the vessels that sank in Pearl Harbor. And of the 429 killed, only 35 were ever identified and brought home. So a sailor from the USS Oklahoma from the state of Alabama named Henry Soley was one of those that was never identified. But now with technology, they've been able to identify him and he's now brought home and he's buried. Family members that never even knew him went to his funeral and they said it was a celebration of his life to welcome him home after all those years. Wow. DNA comes through again. It really does. And on a happy note, 125th birthday, month of January for Ellis Island. Yes. Now, did you have ancestors come through there? I didn't, but my wife's great-grandfather came through there from Scotland. Most of mine came either through Canada or in New England earlier than that. Now, I had a grandmother come through there, and I think I've read a stat where something like half of all Americans have somebody who came through Ellis Island. It's an amazing place, and the nice thing about it is that you can experience the whole passenger arrival process right there at the museum, and you can see the Statue of Liberty. And, and by the way, at ExtremeGenes.com, we've posted a great YouTube video somebody put together of a little history of Ellis Island. And even if you have an attention span somewhat less than a goldfish, you can enjoy this thing and get your kids to enjoy it, too, and appreciate this important place in American history. 
Well, you know, it's funny. My grandmother always told me if she got up in the morning and didn't read her name in the obituary column, she could get up and go and do her daily chores. So I <laughs> want to say that I called you early in the week about that obituary. I think we need to share this one with the listeners. Oh, yeah, this is great. And, and somebody wrote their own obituary, which you got to recommend, right? It was written mm-hmm. by a woman in Madison, Wisconsin named K. Ann Hegestad. And this is what she wrote. K. Ann Hegestad, age 72, bought the farm, is no more has ceased to be, left this world, is bereft of life, gave up the ghost, kicked the bucket, <laughs> Murio Sefini. She died on Friday, January 13th, 2017, after a wimpy non-battle with multiple myeloma after almost two years to the date of diagnosis. No one should say she fought a courageous battle because she did not. What a whiner. She was ready to quit treatment many times, but her family pushed her to continue, which was good since she then had time to have parties and say goodbye to friends and relatives. She wrote this all herself, and it just goes on and on, but what a treat, and we've shared it. It's on ExtremeGenes.com. Last week, we talked about Family Tree Now and yes. opt out. Well, hats off to Patrick Allen, who has written an article, uh, and it's linked right on our Extreme Genes website, on how to opt out on a lot of popular people search sites. That includes Spokio, Peak You, Instant Checkmate, and one that you probably have heard of, White Pages. Wow. That's great. Step by step, too. And so that's going to be really important. What I like about these sites, they're great for us to research through. But what I don't like about them is if we don't want to be found, you know, maybe you got a crazy ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, that would be the place to opt out from. That's probably a good idea. I think I'm going to do that after we finish the show today. (laughs) (laughs) Well, every week I normally mention a free database, but I got something better for our listeners. In honor of our 176th episode, NEHS has a deal. If you are not a member of NEHS, you've been able to try as a guest member for a while now. For $20 off our regular $89.95 membership, you can now join, if you're a new member, by using the checkout code EXTREME. Oh, very and nice. And this is a great way to experience all of AmericanAncestors.org if you've been a guest member for a while now. And I'll send it so we have it for the website and for Twitter as well. Look forward to seeing some of you at Roots Tech, and I'll talk to you next week, Fish. Thanks so much, David, and we'll see you soon. And coming up next, we're going to talk to Zachariah Fike. He is the guy who's put together a group called Purple Hearts Reunited. And you're going to want to hear some of the stories he's got to tell about getting Purple Hearts back to the families of wounded vets. Coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Have you saved the date? Roots Tech, the world's largest family history and technology conference, is coming up Wednesday, February 8th through Saturday, February 11th in Salt Lake City, Utah at the Salt Palace Convention Center. Last year's conference was attended by over 28,000 people from all over the world. There to learn more about finding, sharing, and preserving the records of their families. This year's keynote speakers include actor-producer LeVar Burton, DNA expert CC Moore, HGTV's property brothers Drew and Jonathan Scott and cake boss Buddy Velastro. Plus, this year's Roots Tech Expo Hall will feature over 200 exhibitors from all over the world. Sharpen your sleuthing skills with more than 200 breakout sessions covering every level of expertise discussing DNA, digital preservation, online tools, and much more. You're going to want to be part of Roots Tech 2017. Sign up now at rootstech.org, hosted by Family Search International. Well, Genies, my personal family history researcher who sends me new information day and night has sent me some incredible new records and newspaper stories lately. Hi, it's Fisher, and the name of that researcher, by the way, is MyHeritage.com. It's the hardest working service in genealogy, looking for records of your family 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, even while you're sleeping. How does it work? MyHeritage uses hundreds of algorithms to match your ancestors to over 5 billion records from around the world. World, and with 97% accuracy. That means no more wasting time figuring out whether or not a match really is a match. I hear from listeners all the time who are shocked with how much information is accurately found and then passed along. And now my heritage will translate your ancestors' names into English or any other language you like from foreign records. 
In fact, it works with over 40 languages. No one else does this. Whether you're a beginner or seasoned researcher, you need MyHeritage.com. Legacy Tree Genealogists is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've been working with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins or heirs to property. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll-free at 1-800-818-1476. Call now or register online to get a free estimate. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. LegacyTree.com. And welcome back to Extreme Genes, America's family history show on ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. You know, one of my favorite family heirlooms that uh, I very much treasure is a purple heart that came down into my family that belonged to my mother's cousin. And uh, very unfortunately, he was killed in Europe May 1st of 1945, just a couple of weeks before VE Day. And it very much affected his mother, who lived with that for the rest of her days. But it's something I treasure. And it's always a shock to me to hear that people have let these get out of their families and people are finding them or they're auctioning them off on eBay. And that's why this guy seems very important to me. Zachariah Fike. Hi, Zach. How are you? Good, sir. Thanks for having me on the show. Zach is the founder of an organization called PurpleHeartsReunited.org. And uh, you guys are out actually finding families to go with these uh, missing badges of people who have really uh, paid quite the, uh, well, in some cases, the ultimate sacrifice. Absolutely. We're a nonprofit that exists to find lost or stolen military medals of valor and return them either to the veteran who earned them or their families. So how long have you been doing this, Zach? first started in 2009 when my mom bought me a Purple Heart for Christmas. The organization itself didn't start until 2012. Um, so we've been going strong for four years now, and to date we've returned roughly 300 of these medals to families across the country. Wow, that is so cool. Now, you say she bought you a Purple Heart. Where did she get it? She found it in an antique shop. Uh, mm-hmm. Believe it or not, these medals are turning up all over the country. They're being found in old abandoned homes, vehicles, furniture, metal detector enthusiasts are finding them buried in the ground. My favorite story last year, a dog was digging in the backyard and found a Purple Heart. That dog became the first dog in our history that I know of that found a medal and returned it to a family member. <laughs> uh, yeah. Smucker's the dog. Uh, beautiful. Uh, wore the medal around its collar and walked right up to the daughter and uh, took it off the collar. It was amazing. Wow. Um, what? That's an incredible story. Where was that? Yeah. It was in Denver, Colorado. And uh, overnight, that dog became internet famous and people <laughs> sent care packages, dog food, bones, everything. Uh, She lived really well into the last moments of her life there. Wow, that's an incredible story. Well, yeah, these things do come up all over the place, and it always seems like such a shame to me that they've gotten out of the family. And I would assume that sometimes it's through death, through divorce. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, 50% of metals have just been found or located in some of the ways we've discussed. Um, If you can envision a metal has been found that way, you know, airline tarmac, baggage claim, taxi cab, Broadway show, it's just amazing. Now, the other 50%, we have to essentially try to locate and rescue. Some of these metals have made it to, like you said, eBay, pawn shops. There are many, many metal enthusiasts or collectors. Uh, Some are really good. Some are doing the right thing and, and attempting to rescue these metals so that these men can be honored. Some, however, see it a different light and are basically selling these metals for profit. Wow. Um, the, the average posthumous metal goes for roughly, these days, almost four or $500 on average. If you can tie historical significance, these metals can go for thousands of dollars, um, which we find very unfortunate. 
And we do our best to buy those medals back and get them back to the families. Well, now, how old is the oldest Purple Heart that you've come across and have been able to reunite with descendants? So the medal was first introduced as, a, as the medal we know on February 22nd of 1932. That's when Congress, led by General MacArthur, he pushed Congress to develop a medal that would essentially signify the soldiers from World War One that shed their blood or their lives. They had their first ceremony on August of 32 at what they call the Purple Heart Hall of Honor, which mm-hmm. is in Newburgh, New York. And they first issued roughly 127 medals out to those soldiers. And we actually found one of those original 100 medals, and we were able to return it to a grandson. So we could say that we've returned one of the original Purple Heart medals to a Wow. There were predecessors, though, to this, right, that go back to, like, Washington. Correct. Known as the Badge of Military Merit. It was a cloth patch, purple in color, in the shape of a heart. And hand-stitched across the front was the word merit. That was first awarded August 7th of 1782. August 7th, if you didn't know, every year is National Purple Heart Day in our country. So if you know a veteran who served, please reach out to them and, and thank them for their service. It was awarded not for wounds that we know today. It was actually for fidelity and service, much like the Medal of Honor. Huh. And, and that's essentially what it was initially. It's, it's our nation's oldest medal and uh, gave soldiers the right to come and go from the camp whenever they wanted. And officers like myself would have to salute them as they walk by. Isn't that interesting? Have you ever found any of those going back that far? No, those, those are super rare. You know, anything can happen. Uh, there's a few that are in museums. They believe a lot of them were just destroyed over time. They're not sure how many were issued. Uh, they know for a fact it was awarded to the first three, and they believe maybe a dozen more, but they're really not sure. That's incredible. Well, talk about some of the families you've reached out to. I mean, they must have been absolutely astonished to get a phone call or a text or an email from you guys about uh, their ancestor's service or, or their relative who might even still be living, right? We just had a beautiful ceremony on Saturday in uh, Fremont, Ohio. I have a, what we call a Valor Rescue Team. I have volunteers that help me locate these medals across the country, and we purchase them. This medal set was a very large set. It was from World War I. Uh, this thing was the most complete set I've ever seen. It had his medals. It had his dog tags. It had his wallet with money from France. Wow. It had his pocket knife. It actually had the shrapnel that he pulled from his body in this box, which is amazing. And it was with a collector. This collector had been collecting for many years. He had a large storage unit, so this stuff was kind of just piled up in the storage <laughs> unit. We were able to locate it, pay for it. We believe that the family had someone connected to Florida. That's how the medals kind of ended up there. Could have been, like you said, an estate sale or something to that nature. But regardless, we did the historical research, and we found the family and presented those items back to his four grandchildren. Not only was his four grandchildren there, but he had four great-grandchildren and two great-great-grandchildren in attendance. And it was just amazing (laughs) to see that history coming back to that family, and they were just blown away by it. I can only imagine. Have you run into some cases of stolen valor before, Zach? Uh, we typically don't deal with that. Um, we do have friends in the community that, you know, concentrate on, on people wearing valor that they're not supposed to wear. But that's really not in our wheelhouse. Typically, the medals that we rescue were within a metal enthusiast's hands, either for preservation purposes or in the purpose of selling them to make a profit. Okay, right. And, and that would be most of them, I would imagine. That's the easiest. That's the low-hanging fruit, right? We spent $50,000 last year to rescue roughly 125 medals, and that was from eBay, Craigslist, and, and military collectors wow. across the country. And where's the money come from? We're a nonprofit. Honestly, I didn't think that this thing would grow as large as it's grown. People started asking me, how do we donate? How do we help? And so we established a nonprofit to receive donations. 100% of the donations we receive from the general public go back into returning these medals. You know, that's rescuing the medal from sure. perhaps, uh, you know, eBay. We get them professionally framed free of charge. If you've seen any photos of our frames, they're absolutely beautiful. That preserves the medal, the integrity of it. And then we travel to these hometowns and do these reuniting ceremonies for each family. So we'll travel to your hometown, 
and try to give you an amazing ceremony where we subject you to that history that you never knew about and teach people about the history of the medal, what sacrifice means and what a hero their loved one was. And for a lot of the families, it goes beyond just the medal. That ceremony means a lot to them. It's reuniting families, it's connecting families, and, and for some families, it's bringing them closure. Well, and when you think about that, I mean, Purple Hearts, since you mentioned, go back to only about 1932, we're really talking about the earliest recipients were World War I. I don't assume they, they hit the Spanish-American War, or did they? Uh, there were some veterans that were issued Purple Hearts for the Civil War. Really? Um, yeah, things have changed. Uh, requirements have changed since then. Um, but there were some families that followed through and, and processed a Purple Heart for their Civil War veterans. Wow. That's, uh, but yes, you're correct. That's great. Primarily, it's World War One and, and, and up to date. We literally, just before you called me, I reunited our first Desert Storm medal. Um, you know, there wasn't very many casualties. I think it was 148 in Desert right. Storm. We got a phone call from a man who found a complete medal set down in Georgia. And it belonged to a young Marine who died uh, in 91 during Desert Storm. He was actually one of four of the first casualties. Literally, I mean, four names came across the wire. The Pentagon was trying to sort out who it was. But he was one of the very first deaths of Desert Storm. Unbelievable. I was thinking with these ceremonies, many of these people must have known the individual in most cases because they're so recent. Yes? Yeah, I mean, they're connected by blood. You know, we try to find uh, the closest relative available. Um, but in some cases, you're dealing with maybe the only son. So maybe yeah. his family didn't exist. And in those cases, we find what we call homes of honor. Let's say you were from Fremont, Ohio. I would reach out to their historical society or maybe town hall and get them to you know, receive the medal and put it on display. That way, you know, that hometown can recognize one of their own heroes and people will come through that museum for many years to come and appreciate that service. The service is purpleheartsreunited.org. If you have a purple heart, that's the way to reach out to Zachariah Fike. He is the founder. Thanks so much, Zach, for your time, and thanks for your service. I think you're doing a great thing. Hey, thank you for having us on. It's our pleasure. And this segment of our show has been brought to you by Roots Magic. And coming up in five minutes, we'll talk to Oscar Hammerstein III about how his ancestors created what we know as Broadway today on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. And 
And welcome back to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth, and uh, very excited to have on the phone Oscar Hammerstein III, better known as Andy. He's going to be one of our speakers, one of our featured people at Roots Tech in Salt Lake City, Utah, coming up in just a couple of weeks. Andy, welcome to Extreme Genes. It's an honor and pleasure to have you on. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure, too. Boy, what a, a background you've got, obviously. Uh, basically, your grandfather was uh, the guy who made Broadway what it is today. Pretty much. And then his father made Broadway, period. So between <laughs> the two of them, they really stayed pretty busy in the theater. Now, what about yourself? Are you in the theater world? Now, I'd be the first to say no, but then I find myself on stages in front of crowds of thousands, and I wonder... Maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit. Maybe I am in show business after all. I do a lot of talking about my family, and it is some form of entertainment. So I think I am in show business now. It's worked out that way, hasn't it? Now, you're the family historian at this yes. point, and I know there must be dozens and dozens of cousins out there because, as you've mentioned to me off the air, uh, you had obviously lots of siblings. Your dad had lots of siblings. Yep. His dad had lots of siblings. But you seem to be the one who has taken the, the lead on doing the family history and written a book about it. Tell us a little about the family background and some stories you learned about Rogers and Hammerstein and how that all became such a big Ooh. thing. When I think about the process of having collected materials for the book that I wrote and learning something that I didn't know before I started, there's a lot of that. When you go back in time and try to research your family, you find out that your brother's really your cousin and that <laughs> you're, you realize that families are as messy back then as they are today. And and I, I have found it, it explains a lot when you get right down to it, when you get granular and you, and you find out how things happen, you, it, it starts to make a lot more sense. It becomes part of a, of, a, of a more clear narrative. And that's always enjoyable. I really enjoy the process of discovery. Yes. Where something I didn't know was going to be there is going to be there. I think in the process of discovery, we often find that knowing something isn't nearly as fun as finding it out, you know? That is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. And sometimes answers will show up long after you stop looking like, oh, I will never know the answer to that. And then all of a sudden, some military record or some birth certificate will reveal a piece of information that you just go, oh, that now that makes sense. He couldn't have been that old. That couldn't have been his right, right. that kind of thing. <laughs> and I do that that was very enjoyable. I mean, I'll give away one of my great stories. One of my great stories is when I was just starting out and I was taking my little tape recorder back then, yeah, tape recorders they were separate from your phone. And you take them around to the oldest members of your family. Yes. And I would go really far afield, second cousins, wives, just whoever was still alive. I would get them down on a table and I'd start talking to them. And I would talk to one of these um, uh, widows of, an old, of one of the older Hammersteins, and she turns to me and she goes, oh, wait a minute. And she goes, I think there's a box in the attic. Oh, yes. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, my, your hands go, like, sweaty and hot, and you go, really? Let me help you get him down. Right. And she says, yeah, go ahead. And I open up the box, and there's like bound editions of program guides from 1894, scrapbooks from 1890, photographs no one has ever seen before. When you opened that box, you didn't realize that it was going to change your life. Right. You just thought it was a box. Yeah. It's a time machine. It's a, it's a time machine, but it's also like an enormous responsibility because... It only regains meaning by how much effort you put into that box. It's changed my whole, like, changed the course of my life, actually. Oh, I can imagine. And, of course, you've got to share it with people. Otherwise, its value exactly. is, is minimized. Precisely. You have to understand where it fits in the larger narrative so that you can provide not just data, but information and even meaning to what it is you're, you're trying to share. So, Is there a Hammerstein Museum out there? There isn't a Hammerstein Museum, but there's probably going to become one very soon. My brother Willie is working hard to turn the old farmhouse in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, into a museum for uh, Hammerstein stuff. So with any luck, I'll have the opportunity to give all the, the paraphernalia, as it were, to him to display. 
boy, that's really important to have a plan and where this stuff is going to go. And I think we all True. have that problem in any family. You want to True. make sure that these things survive in one form or another. You've digitized them all, I assume, by of now? Of course. Yeah. I have digitized almost everything by now. That's something of a relief because for me, it's not really the ephemera itself. It's the information contained in it. Right. It's not the object. It's the story of the object. Right. So being able to digitize it allows you to not feel so proprietary over the actual object. You got what you needed from it. Now you can just give it away and share it with other people. Yep. It's not the important thing. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. Even an old family Bible record, it's great to own the original pages. But more yes. important than that is to have it out there for others who may have interest in the future to be able to Precisely. access it. Are you musical? I've been trying to be. <laughs> like in, in this enormous uh, transition from being a painter to being a writer, First, I was writing, of course, nonfiction, and nonfiction, well, nonfiction tells you where it's going to take you. You know, like, this is what happened. You're either going to follow this story or you're going to make something up, so follow this story. That's sure. nonfiction. But fiction is like, hey, you can make stuff up. And that's what I've been working on now, but trying to incorporate semi-fiction into screenplays about my great-great-grandfather's vaudeville house at the turn of the century. So that's been that's been a great challenge for me, and I've been really enjoying it. And I hope something will come of it. So that is, I do write, and I do write about the family history. But now I'm taking more liberties, which is very enjoyable. Well, I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with an historical novel because I think to to a no. great extent that makes this material much more accessible to people who don't want no. just the facts. I think maybe you would appreciate it. Right, right now, I'm building up a story where Jack Johnson, the, the, the black prize fighter, meets yep. Will Rogers, the essayist, in a barn on the roof of a vaudeville house, and they have a long conversation. And for me, to be able to take two people like that and make them have a conversation, even a fictitious one, is just so satisfying. Yes. Uh, yes. So I can say that this has taken over my life in a lot of great ways. Wow. How's your family take to this? Obviously, it's a but whole different my, one for you. Yes. Um, well, I'm sure my wife thinks I live in a world of my own, and that's no question true. <laughs> and my children are patient and loving, so they put up with whatever I, I do. I can't but say I think uh, it's smooth sailing for my family. That's that's incredible. Well, let's talk about what's coming up at Roots Tech Thursday sure. night, which would be February 9th in Salt Lake City, Utah. You're going to be doing a presentation about your ancestors and Rogers and Hammerstein at, at the Salt Lake City Conference Center with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Wow. Yeah. I wish they would give me more time to speak, but the amount of time that I do have, my job basically is to provide something of a historical context to what it is you're hearing. So you can bring a little more meaning into your listening to Rodgers and Hammerstein music. You'll go, oh, yes, of course, that was during World War II. Or, yes, of course, that was because of this or because of that. So I, I hope I can give meaning or a little tiny added richness to the music, though in truth, I'm sure it doesn't really need me, but there I <laughs> well, am. Well, I think it's going to help out just a whole lot. And tickets are free. This is the thing. It's so amazing. So you go to rootstech.org, and you can uh, get your tickets as they're still available. Andy, it has been a delight yes, to sir. visit with you, and we so look forward to seeing you in Salt Lake City, Utah, coming up in February. The privilege is all mine. I can't wait. And this segment of our show has been brought to you by LegacyTree.com. And coming up for you in three minutes, Tom Perry is going to be here, our preservation authority from TMCPlace.com. We're going to reveal to you the 10 most common passwords that get a lot of people into trouble. We've certainly heard a lot about that in the last few months, haven't we? It's coming up on America's family history show, Extreme Genes. You know, everybody needs a place of their own to plant their family tree, preferably one that no one else can mess with and only you can control. That perfect place is Roots Magic. Roots Magic has been a family history standard for years, and now Roots Magic 7 is on the market. It's an award-winning genealogical software program which makes researching, organizing, and sharing your family history easy. You can start from scratch or import data from other software or even family search. Roots Magic 
also automatically finds records relating to your ancestors from MyHeritage, FamilySearch, and soon Ancestry and Find My Past. You can use it to create beautiful charts, reports, and books. And have you ever thought about making your own family history website? Roots Magic can make that happen too. And of course, there are free videos, guides, and technical support to help you along. Isn't it about time you planted your family tree? Whether you're a beginning genie or experienced professional, Roots Magic is the perfect tool for you. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. Have you saved the date? Roots Tech, the world's largest family history and technology conference, is coming up Wednesday, February 8th through Saturday, February 11th in Salt Lake City, Utah at the Salt Palace Convention Center. Last year's conference was attended by over 28,000 people from all over the world, there to learn more about finding, sharing, and preserving the records of their families. This year's keynote speakers include actor-producer LeVar Burton, DNA expert CC Moore, HGTV's Property Brothers Drew and Jonathan Scott and Cake Boss Buddy Velastro. Plus, this year's Roots Tech Expo Hall will feature over 200 exhibitors from all over the world. Sharpen your sleuthing skills with more than 200 breakout sessions covering every level of expertise discussing DNA, digital preservation, online tools, and much more. You're going to want to be part of Roots Tech 2017. Sign up now at rootstech.org, hosted by Family Search International. And welcome back to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, your radio root sleuth with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. He is our preservation authority. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hello. Closing in on Roots Tech and uh, looking forward to our meet and greets. We've got one on Thursday, one on Saturday at uh, our booth, which is the Extreme Genes booth, 1325 in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, I, I have to bring this up before we get started talking about that, Tom. The, uh, the list is out from Keeper. It's the most used passwords of 2016. And uh, listen to some of these. Okay, the number one most used password, 123456. <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, and, and then so you're it, just counting down. Somebody actually uses that as their password. Yeah, that's their password. And uh, the number seven password is 123456. The number four password is one two three four five six seven eight. Yeah. Then you go to nine. That's the number two password. Oh, wow. Then you go all the way and add a zero at the end. That's uh, the number six password. One two three four five six seven eight nine zero. Do these people work for the DNC? I, <laughs> well, that word was password, right? Oh, you're kidding. Remember John Podesta? Oh, that's right. Yeah, and the password was password. That is the number eight most common password out there. Uh, QWERTY is another one. Q W E R T Y, you know, the top of the keyboard, the top line there on the left. Uh, that's the number three most common password. Uh, the number five most common password, 111111. <laughs> yeah. Number nine is 123123. And uh, number 10 is nine through one backwards. So, wow. so, you know, this is what we've talked about before. Don't be ridiculous, people. You got to make them longer. You got to mix in capitals. You got to have letters and numbers. And even better than that is something like an asterisk or an exclamation point mixed in there somewhere as well. You to know, make it's crazy it really tough. that a lot of these different sites now are forcing us to be smart and not be stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, that just blows my mind that somebody would have.
have a password with those numbers that they would have their you know private things or family history, different things like that that people would have access oh, to. Money. <laughs> oh, money. <laughs> Retirement. If you're thinking, oh, I need to use the top row of my keyboard so I don't forget what my password is, say you can do something like, say you don't even have a cat, but you have dogs, and your favorite dog is Jeremy. So on a piece of paper, put my password for site XYZ is cat. So anybody's going to see cat, they're not going to know what that means. But you know that's really my dog's name, Jeremy. Right. And spell it backwards if you want. You exactly. know, something like that. And make maybe the middle letter in a capital. So like when you write the word cat as your reminder what it is, put it lowercase c, capital A, and then a lower T, and then maybe an 8 after it, or a 14, or whatever year the... Well, you got to make it longer than that. Right. But yes, put the name in, or something like right, that. Right, but that's just to remind you, so you have that clue. When you see little C, big A, little T, and 18 after it, you know, oh, that's really my dog's name, and the third letter is capitalized, and then I have the year he was born. And as we're talking about things that are safe, with Roots Tech coming up, for all you listeners that are going to be coming to Roots Tech, make sure you get all your stuff organized, and come to Roots Tech with your questions, because there's going to be amazing people there that are going to be able to help you. Absolutely. One other thought, by the way, on these uh, passwords. How about the name of an ancestor and split up their birth year so it'd be 18 Elizabeth 74. Exactly. Or something like that, with an exclamation point. So it's longer, and you mix in the capitals and the smalls, like we talk about, and make it really tough. Oh, yeah, and you write down a code word that you'll know exactly what that means, who Elizabeth is and how the years are, but you're going to do something different, like write down 00, maybe her husband's name. So you've written down his name, but you really know it's his wife's name. So if you forget it, you can look it up and you know what it is, but somebody who finds your cheat note is going to have no idea what it means. All right, this segment's been brought to you by Roots magic.com. We've got Roots Tech coming up here real quick, February oh, yeah. 8th through the 11th. We're going to be there. David Lambert's going to be there. We're looking forward to seeing you. We're going to talk more about that coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Com. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. 
genie.com. Genies, it's Fisher with exciting news. The Weekly Genie, the official newsletter of Extreme Genes, is here. It's your Monday morning briefing on what's happening in the world of genealogy and family history and on Extreme Genes. Get all the details of jaw-dropping stories of discovery and keep up with the latest techniques in family history research. Get to know more about your favorite Extreme Genes personalities. And it's free. Sign up for The Weekly Genie now at ExtremeGenes.com or the Extreme Genes Facebook page. And when you do, you'll receive David Allen Lambert's top 10 tips for beginning genealogists from the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Sign up today for The Weekly Genie. And we are back. It's our final segment of Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show on ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com, the Preservation Authority. All right, Tom, Roots Tech coming up in Salt Lake City, Utah at the Salt Palace. A lot of genies are going to be there. What can they expect to see? There's going to be all kinds of cool things. In fact, somebody that's listened to our show has heard of Ron Fox. Yes. He's actually going to be there. He's going to have his own little booth where you can bring him old photos, and he can help you date them, tell you even if they're worth things. It's almost like the antique road show. And you don't actually have to bring your photo if you're really scared about that. Just make sure you take a good color copy of it of both sides so he can actually look at it. Well, I've known Ron for over 20-some-odd years, and this guy is absolutely killer when it comes to photographs. He has, like you say, just this incredible mind. If you have a lot of photos you want to get scanned, we're going to be having scanning parties there. We're going to be working with Easy Photo Scan, where you can scan stuff for free. We're going to have a new release. We've told people about if you want to rent a scanner, you can rent a scanner. We're going to start renting slide scanners now. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah, this is so cool because most people don't need a scanner forever, and nobody needs a slide scanner forever. You only have so many slides. (laughs) Right. So your family reunion or a get-together, you can go in and rent this for a week and have everybody bring their slides. Everybody chips in, knocks out their slides. And instead of buying a cheap old two, dollars $300 slide scanner, you're going to get a $5,000 slide scanner for a week that's going to give you incredible pictures. Isn't that a great idea? And they're going to be displaying these at the Easy Photo Scan booth uh-huh. at Roots Tech? Yeah, we'll have them at Easy Photo Scan. We'll also have them in our TMC Place booth as well as a lot of other things, a shot box. We're trying to make this so people... People can get the best and latest technology without having to invest a lot of money or settle in for second class. Right. This way you can render for a week, whether it's the easy photo scan type things, which are the slide scanners, the photo scanners. It just makes it so easy to do everything. Just need to get organized. So if you have a lot of pictures, bring them with you, and we'll be doing free scanning at our booth and at easy photo scan. And, of course, if you have questions about this, as you prepare to come to Roots Tech, if you're going to make it out there, you can always send an email to asktom at tmcplace.com, and he can give you more details. This is going to be one of the best Roots Techs ever. The incredible things are going to be there. A lot of associates we're going to be working with. We've got new software we're going to be displaying. It's just absolutely incredible for you to be there. And, of course, remember, LeVar Burton is a keynote speaker, which is going to be very exciting. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Star Trek? Yes, I suppose. Do you think we're going to see a lot of genies out there dressed in Star Trek attire? I sure hope so. Well, but he was the guy. He was Kunta Kinte, though, in Roots. That's what I think most folks are going to think of him for from this. You're right. You're, You're totally right. It's just my son saw it, and he just lit up because he's totally a Star Trek nerd. He just loves it. Yeah, there's so many friends that are going, can you get me a signed picture of him? Can you get me this? You know, we'll right. see how it goes. Right. In fact, the Property Brothers, one of the number one shows on HGTV, they're going to be at Roots Tech, and that's going to be a lot of fun, too, doing their history, finding out about them growing up. And Andy Hammerstein, he is Oscar Hammerstein the third, talking about his ancestor from wow. Rogers and Hammerstein and how they created what Broadway is today, essentially, that's going to be tremendous. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. If you have any chance of coming, you've got to come to this one. This is a must-do. And you can go online to rootstech.org to get your tickets and find out everything else you want to do, including sign up for various classes. You're going to be teaching one, yes? Oh, yeah. I'll be there doing all different kinds of things on scanning. And I also remember on Saturday, it's family day, so the kids get in free. So bring your family. They're going to have special things just for kids on Saturday. All right. It's going to be a great time. February 8th through 11th, Salt Lake City, Utah at the Salt Palace. The uh, web address again, rootstech.org to find out all about it. And we look forward to seeing you there, Tom. I'll be happy to be there. It's going to be my pleasure.
And that wraps up our show for this week. This segment of Extreme Genes has been brought to you by FamilySearch.org. The people behind Roots Tech 2017 coming up here February 8th through 11th. Find out more at ExtremeGenes.com. And while you're there, sign up for our Extreme Genes free newsletter, The Weekly Genie. And when you do, you'll get the top 10 tips for beginning genealogists from David Allen Lambert, the chief genealogist for the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Thanks for joining us. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice normal family.